Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I wanted to take a second to tell you about MMOtimer.com. It's a boss timer for uh, BDO bosses that tell you when the boss is going to be spawning, how much longer until they're up, and which, which boss is when. It does work for any server, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. It's a pretty handy tool if you haven't used it before. What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we are looking at the Histria 20 hour grind, and this is on the Elton rotation specifically, so if you're unfamiliar with this uh, rotation, it is more designed around getting these guys that you see on the screen here, Eltons, uh, as they have better drop rates on the more rare items, Tungrad Necklace, uh, and whatnot here than your normal main rotation. You do sacrifice a bit of trash loot per hour for that, but we'll get into that when we look at the spreadsheets. So I'm gonna quickly show you the Elton rotation, but before we get into that, let's take a look at what kind of item drops you get at Histria if you are unfamiliar with the zone in general. So it is right around here somewhere in front of me. There we go, Histria. Uh, so in History Runes, we can get the Tungrad Necklace uh, that drops Brawl just by itself. Um, you do have black shards and red shards, which are combined the, to create the Tungrad earring. Of course, we've got scrolls, a decent amount of uh, BMCs. We've got upgraded compass parts, traveler's map, and the regular compass parts as well. So, obviously, Big Daddy Tungrad necklace, definitely what we're looking for, uh, straight up money there. And on the Elton rotation, we're typically looking to get a lot of shards as well to turn into Tungrad earrings and make some money that way. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you the rotation uh, for the Elton, or at least the rotation I used for this 20 hours. Um, some of the pulls, you'll have to get a little creative with your class, because obviously, I only did this with DK for how they work, and there's a couple that are a little bit tricky. Um, I'm going to talk over most of it and just kind of show you the pulls and, and burn through it quickly rather than actually killing each of the mobs because it take extra time we don't need. So this first room is where we'll start here, and this is probably the second trickiest pull um, that's in it. You kind of move forward and you want to hit this guy and then get out of the way real quick so that he aggros. You'll see the Eltons move very, very slowly, so you got to set it up so that they'll all group up together, and then once they're together, get in, drop your skill rotation, and burn them down. Uh, from there, then you'll grab this little taco guy over here. Maybe grab this guy here too, and then let them group up. Kind of wait here in your guard, group them up, and then again go into your skill rotation, burn them down from here. Next group, uh, initially I was stiffing this guy, but you actually just kind of aggro him normal. Grab these dudes here, because if you stiffen him, he takes a little too long. You want him to not do that electric attack. Uh, if he does, then you just go in, burn up this group. You get the idea there, and then grab this bro. And we'll dash over, pull these guys, and this taco right here. And then again, you group, you wait right here for a couple seconds, get them all grouped up, go into your skill rotation, make sure you get the taco in there too, burn them down. And then the next group, this is a little bit interesting, you get used to it. You want to go down this little dip so that you're aggroing these two guys here as well. And then I just climb right back up and sit on the other side of this Elton, give them a second to all group up. We've got the taco because I haven't killed any of the other mobs coming with us. And then you go into your rotation from here, etc. Then you're just going to walk down towards the water and zip your way over whatever skills you got as fast as you can here. Now this pull, uh, I'm going to uh, aggro that Elton. This pull gets a little tricky. If you see this Tutuka bird, there's another Tutuka bird that can spawn further up that I'm about to show you when that guy resets. He can line a sight one of the mobs that we're going to pull. And if he does, you kind of want to just split it into two pulls in general. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you that now if I don't get stunned. I need that Elton to reset before we do it. But yeah, when he line of sights him, it gets really, really annoying uh, because it just wastes your time. You end up having to do two pulls when only one is necessary. So anyways, once he's reset, here we go. You'll just run up here, and then you can pull this second Elton like this, and then just dash over to the side, and then wait for them to get next to each other just like you did on that first pull, and then go ahead and go through your rotation through there. If that bird, he moves around, so he can stand line of sight in your way. Actually, the guy didn't aggro. He can stand right about here, in which case it might block your attack on that one. If that happens, just pull this group, and then you can do this group afterwards. Uh, that does happen sometimes and slows you down. And then final group before you get back to your reset. If you hit, you wanna hit that center piece there because it'll actually aggro both of the dudes instead of just one or the other. And then you'll get everybody grouped up here and go ahead and burn them through whatever your skill rotation for your class is, etc. Obviously that second Elton wouldn't be there. So that's the uh, skill rotation, at least that what I used for this uh, 20 hour grind going through it. Um, you might have it a little bit modified, but at least you get an idea of what I was doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what other kind of buffs and things I was using for this. And then we'll look at the spreadsheet as well and see how we did. Before I do pull the spreadsheet over, just a couple things I want to cover because it is a little bit different uh, than my normal videos. So obviously, base 62 
uh, Dark Knight, and there is no node for Histria at all, so obviously a level 0 node, there isn't one. A full tier for pets, which isn't super important in Histria um, until you really get burning through the mobs pretty quickly. Uh, it's very, very rare that you wouldn't have your uh, dudes loot because you're killing the mobs much slower than normal, although in some of the bigger packs I could see um, some points where you maybe it doesn't loot a pack when you're jumping from one to the other. I had Comma Blessing up for all 20 hours. This 20 hours, unlike most, I did use loot scroll throughout all of it because it's Histria, why would you not? I wasn't on Arsha for any of it, and I was I was being lazy and not using a food rotation. Do want to point out that previously the food rotation was definitely better, and you would get a little bit better trash per hour. Uh, I just used Cron Meals, and this was before they were buffed. Uh, as of recording this, uh, Cron Meals have now been buffed to where they are just as good as a food rotation, but they were not when I was doing the 20-hour grind prior to this, uh, so that was obviously an effect. And then elixir-wise, I was using Frenzy Elixir and obviously Villa buffs throughout the whole time. So. Okay, so here's what we're looking at for 20 hours. Uh, first thing let's talk about is trash loot uh, for this. A uh, couple of things that happened when I first started this. Number one, obviously, I had to learn the rotation. As with any of the 20-hour grinds, you're kind of figuring it out early on. So obviously, you're going to expect lower numbers. Uh, but the other thing is when I started doing this, I was 257 main hand with Kudum and 265 uh, main uh, awakening with Kudum equipped. And by the time I ended this... Uh, this whole thing, I was uh, 267 and 269 with Kudum because I made some gains during that, hit Penzarka and also got Vel's Heart as well, and then some Kafirs here and there. Uh, so my uh, AP did indeed change pretty significant brackets throughout that. And the other thing along with this, which I usually never ever do, uh, I did actually do some of these hours on stream. The reason I don't typically do that uh, is because it does heavily affect my trash loot uh, per hour for two reasons. One, obviously, running uh, the stream is a little more CPU intensive and so is BDO. So uh, my FPS does drop when I'm streaming and uh, doing these as well. In addition to, obviously, I'm interacting with chat, so it was a little bit lower. Point being, you could expect a little bit higher with uh, 269 Kudum. Um, if you're a, a DK or whatever your class may be, you should be expecting a little bit higher from these results than what I was doing, at least for some of them. They weren't all on stream, but some were. And again, my AP did fluctuate a decent amount across the board. So at the end of the day, across 20 hours, I ended up averaging 2.3, almost 2.4, which isn't too bad. My peak, uh, let's see, 2.2, 2651, almost, almost getting into 2700 uh, in these three hours. I know for a fact these three were off stream and it's... The only hours I got to do with 269 Kudum were these four. These three were off stream, and then I started stream on that last one, which was 2.3, which on stream hours honestly isn't that bad. Um, my lowest, obviously, was my first hour, 1983. I was learning the rotation and trying to figure things out. So as far as drops, we've got Explorer's Compass can drop there. Um, and I count to about 0.3, which is uh, one every three hours-ish. Um, so not much there. Almost exactly the same for the Traveler's Map. Black Magic Crystals, we average about 7 per hour. I didn't get a single upgraded compass drop throughout any of the 20 hours there, which was kind of expected because that item's very, very rare. Uh, quest item, uh, we got a little more than 1 every 2 hours on average. Black Stones, right at about 32. We already covered the trash loot. Uh, red shards, I got one every four hours was the average. I actually ended up with more black shards on that. That's kind of why you run the Elton rotation is because you want to run that RNG game. You're sacrificing a bit of your consistent trash loot like you would get on main rotation for a little bit more uh, RNG chances with all the Eltons that you're killing. That is why it's called the Elton rotation. Tongue Guide Earring shouldn't be in this column because it doesn't drop raw here. That is for Aukman. Scrolls ended up averaging about 10 an hour. Um, you can see the lowest. I had a, one crazy hour and this was on stream as well. Only five scroll drops and it was also my overall worst hour at 59, um, 59 million silver for that hour. Just a weird RNG. I only got four BMCs, five scrolls, just a weird, really bad hour from there. My highest being 17 the hour prior to it. Uh, and then I did get one Tungrad necklace, which also amounted to my highest uh, per hour to 160 million in the hour that that Tungrad necklace dropped, obviously because it's very good, as well as 14 scroll drops. And scrolls are very expensive right now, so that definitely helped out. So as you can see, when I first started this out, even when I was learning the rotation and my trash loot was lower, uh, I was killing it with RNG, uh, absolutely killing it. I was getting black shards left and right in the first nine hours or so, and then a Tungrad uh, drop in the ninth hour which was really incredible. So I was like, all right, awesome. This is the best thing I've ever, this is the best video I've ever done or best grind for 20 hours I've ever done. And then of course, RNG had to balance itself out uh, and I got murdered for the second half of the video. Short, uh, aside from just one black uh, shard drop from there at 200. These got pretty bad, which was disappointing because somewhere around here was also when I hit my Penzarka and I was expecting to just absolutely crush it. And although my trash loot was going up over time, my uh, RNG was definitely going down. But I guess that's what happens when you hit a Penzarka. You expect your RNG to balance back out. This gave us across 20 hours a total average of 129 million, which is still really, really good, obviously. 
again, the Elton rotation, you're playing with RNG. You're looking for those rare drops um, and not so much the consistent trash lit that you would see uh, from the main rotation. So that is what we got from this 20 hour video. That does conclude this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like it. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so that you get notifications when new videos go live. The next one is going to be finishing up the poly forest video. I'm doing that on my lawn, so it won't be my main gear. It is some side gear that I put together doing it with like 185 AP, I think on there. So that'll be out sometime next week. So be sure to look forward to that and if you do want to catch the live streams when we are doing stuff like this the link to the twitch page is in the description below so you can head on over there and drop a follow so you get a notification whenever we go live or you can check out the weekly stream schedule which is also posted there and on twitter as well so that you know when the stream will be live with that said that is going to be it for this video everybody thank you for watching and i will see you next time Baby.